Welcome to the CESS meeting. Today is Wednesday, May 18th of 2022. Uh, our agenda today appears to so far be, uh, we have a special guest uh, from MetaMask, Olaf, uh, who wants to talk about SNAPs and the possibility of using ESM directly instead of um, instead of uh, a, a form compiled to a JavaScript program. Um, and, uh, and then after that, I have uh, an open diff for an update of the compartments proposal that I'm, uh, I'd like to review as a group if we have time. And then uh, if, uh, if uh, we have additional time after that, which seems unlikely, the um, Matthew and our friends at Salesforce have a topic to discuss regarding shadow realms and what happens when exceptions are thrown. Um, Olaf, uh, please, welcome. Um, pleasure to meet you. Hi, welcome everybody. I'm Olaf. I'm an engineer at uh, MetaMask Snaps. Uh, so currently snaps are run as an immediately invoked function uh, inside the SNES environment. Uh, what we do is we inject an object that provides a way to register uh, APIs from snaps themselves. Uh, we call them uh, RPC handlers. Uh, what we want to do is we want to move to a model where uh, uh, the snaps themselves export functions with specific names, and we use that exported module as an API that we talk to. Um, I've been playing it for the past few days, um, trying to understand how to make modules work properly inside SES, how to make uh, import dynamic imports work, uh, and how to evaluate both it in a browser and in the node environment. Um, the goal we're trying to reach is to have ESM modules. Uh, and I, I have some uh, trouble understanding all of the complexities right now. So I, I drop by to understand how, how, the, how it works and talk with you experts here. Oh, of course. Awesome. Um, yeah, I can, I can field that question. Um, it depends on how deep we need to go. Uh, but the, the, so we have this proposal for compartments. Um, and uh, my understanding is that MetaMask is currently only using compartments for their evaluate method, right? Um, uh, no, wait, not, you're not even necessarily using the evaluate method because you sometimes run in uh, uh, a, a no eval content security policy. Uh, we always use uh, compartments and evaluate. Uh, we first evaluate the snap uh, to get um, function registers uh, registered. And then afterwards, we have a, a, a function object that we call afterwards. I that see. So you are that. currently using some other bundler, I assume, to take ESM modules and convert them into a program that can be evaluated. Is that right? You're using Browserify, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, we're using Browserify. That's right. Yeah. OK. So the. Um, the crux of this is that uh, to get from where you are to where uh, to to using uh, let, let me reframe the question uh, in 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 what I think what I think that the the ask is yeah I used the word um, what your request is um, <laughs> um, to you that you'd like to use the SES shims support for ESM modules um, so that you can take advantage of module namespace objects in order to host the APIs. Yeah, which is very similar to how we're using it at Agoric um, and how we intend to use it for Endo. The, uh, the, the, the technical thing going on here is that the shim is uh, uh, an emulation of what we wish compartments to be when they're added as a language feature, right? Um, which, which is to say that a lot of the, the shape of the compartment API is dictated not by what is the easiest thing to do to achieve your ends in JavaScript, but what is the easiest ends to emulate how we want to use it in the browser someday with, without a shim. Um, so uh, the, the compartment API in its purest sense is that it provides you have a compartment and instead of using the evaluate method, you would use the import method of the compartment, which would be equivalent um, to using dynamic import without a referrer 
right? So you'd provide the fully qualified address of the thing you want to run. Um, and then in order to serve that, the compartment has hooks for module resolution, which is to say how to take a, an import specifier and its refer module specifier and give you the, the logical full specifier for a particular import um, in, in some modules bindings, um, which is synchronous, followed by how do you get a module descriptor for that module by going off and fetching something off of the file system or the web? How do you treat namespaces? Um, uh, how do you treat the namespaces if it's on the web or if we're coming from a bundle or coming from um, some other source? Uh, all of which are possible because it's fully it's it's a it's a host it's it's a host hook that the compartment API provides. So um, that is the pure version of the story. the the rea the shim reality is that the security uh, the security guarantees of the SES shim all are framed in terms of eval. Um, so evaluate is the basis of the security model and, um, and the language does not yet provide something like compartment that would you allow you to evaluate uh, module sources. So we emulate that by um, using the static module record package to um, do a source to source transformation from ESM to a program that you can evaluate in the compartment and the compartment internals are responsible for doing that evaluate call and doing all of the intermodule linkage and um, exploring out the dependency graph and getting the transitive dependencies and all of that, which gets driven by the compartment API. Now, um, that how you use that depends on a whole bunch of things, but I think that it's safe to say for MetaMask's purposes that you would want your plugins to use nodes, um, uh, ba basically do what Browserify does, except do it using the compartment API, um, which is to say, uh, emulate ESM. <laughs> uh, and um, the, the, uh, the, there are basically two different ways different sets of compromises for how to do that. One of which is you're writing a program in development. There's no round trip time between the compartment that is between the container that's executing and the file system, the local file system. So in that case, it's practical to just use the compartment API to run the thing off of a file system and do all of the exploration of all of the module graph asynchronously because you know you find you find your entry point module you do an analysis of all of its shallow import declarations you go off and fetch those so there's a round trip time to fetch the second order de transitive dependencies and then you then you find their shallow dependencies and then you go off and fetch them so there's potentially a whole bunch of round trip times in just discovering your module graph that the compartment api allows you to drive which are not generally practical for a production use case, but might be for MetaMask because all of the sources are presumably deployed as part of the, the, the Chrome extension. Is that true? Well, the way I'm thinking about it is we still uh, bundle the snap into one file, but instead of just running it as a function immediately, we, pr we, we bundle all the imports inside one file and have just a, a standard export function. So there wouldn't be round trips, there would be just one big module. That okay, work. cool. Then the easy answer, I guess, is that you just use what we built already in the compartment mapper. Um, the compartment mapper provides, if you're, if you're okay with that one big string being a base64 encoded zip file, we already have a solution for you. <laughs> um, this is what we use at Agoric. Um, so there's a, there's a, uh, a, a package exported from Endo called Bundle Source that we use at Agoric that takes an entry point on the file system and then generates an archive that can be later run by import bundle, another package provided by, um, uh, by Agoric. And then if you use that, then you'll be able to, then you will certainly be able to benefit from everything that ZB is doing right now um to add common js support as well at the moment it 
uh, I think actually we do have working common JS at the moment and we're just refining it. So, so I, I saw the, the bundler, uh, from what I understand, it, it creates a bundle with that exports a single function, uh, get exports that simulates ESM modules. Is, is that right? So it, no. it needs to be. No, that's not actually the case. Um, well, it is part of the story, not the whole story. There are three kinds of bundles that we can generate with bundle source. That uh, one of which is called get exports, which we use for bootstrapping, and that's not what you're looking for. Um, the get exports is an old, the oldest one we have, and it depends on rollup at the end of the day. So it wouldn't put you in a position that's any different than what you've got with browser, uh, with Preserverify. Uh, 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 just uh, Chris, uh, since we're, you said we're using get exports for our own bootstrap and get exports depends on rollup. Does that mean that our bootstrap depends on rollup? Yeah, it does still at the moment. Uh, pardon, the CES bootstrap does not. Oh, okay. The um, the the swing set bootstrap in XSnap that we run in XSnap does still depend on rollup. What's our plan on that? Uh, eventually get Endo's bundler sufficient to replace it. And what's what's the missing? What, yeah, what's missing? The, bundle, the pardon. Yeah. So compartment mapper has a bundler that is spiritually analogous yeah, to yeah. Rollup or Browserify. Um, and and to be clear, Olaf, this is not something that would satisfy your use case. Um, I don't think it might. I don't think so. Um, we use it for what we call bootstrapping, which is to say building the module system. <laughs> so that we can use the module system for other subsequent for other subsequent bundles, um, and um, so there's a, 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 uh, in order to deliver the module system to our our container, we use that format. Um, and in Endo, we have a partial implementation of what of, that could replace rollup for that purposes. It is sufficient for uh, effectively rolling up CES itself. Um, but the acceptable limitations of CES are that it's a single package. It doesn't have any compartment edges that exit a single package, which is to say no, depend, no, no dependencies from CES to anything else. Um, and it also uh, doesn't have live binding support, and it also does not have support for um, common JS or any of the other things. It's just it's pure ESM. So with those with those constraints in mind, there's a, there is a tool in Compartment Mapper for generating a single string that's equivalent to uh, a whole program and uses CES itself and uses CES internals in its static module record mechanism um, to create an inline uh, application as a as a JavaScript string. Um, and it's not yet suitable because of those limitations um, for use uh, in Agoric's bootstrapping process. Um, so, so, so what is what's our plan for what else do we have to do so we can get rid of rollup? Um, for this purpose, it, it, yeah, we we would have to um, get the bundler to follow links to other compartments and give those modules appropriate names. Um, and and support and basically support following through aliases or redirects um, to the actual source. Um, this is basically taking the dependency graph and flattening it so that none of the um, none of the symbolic links exist anymore, and everything refers directly to the thing that it actually depends upon, uh, which shouldn't be hard. Uh, and then common JS is not necessary for Agoric, but it it shouldn't be hard to do that either. Um, yeah, and then, then so the plan would be to replace get export with an endo string module format in the in the future. Right. Um, I also had uh, another interesting uh, question: is um, since we need to create static module records and we don't really count what well, we can't trust snaps, right? So we can't do it during compile time. Uh, I was thinking uh, the snap itself could provide a list of exports, but it could provide false exports. So from what I understand at the current state, we need to have the whole parser included in the in the bundle pretty much, right? To parse um, this. Well, you mean in the runtime? Um, so, so no, uh, the, the way we've arranged it 
Okay, so so I just I just spent a, a, a deal of time explaining for Mark's benefit what the um, the get exports module format does. I didn't get to explain what the endo zip base sixty four format is. That's that's a format that uses a base sixty four encoded zip file that contains all of the pre compiled static module records for all of the modules in a compartment map that describes how to link them. Um, again, using the compartment at runtime, but use, but only using the static module record constructor at um, at uh, bundle time whenever you do that. Um, there, which is to say, yes, to create a bundle re uh, requires a full JavaScript parser, um, but uh, the runtime doesn't need to trust that you did that properly. It's just going to evaluate um static module records that are pre-compiled um and because it's doing that inside of a CES evaluator it um doesn't give the the modules an opportunity to um uh escape containment even though it's pre-compiled so um, from what i understand if, if the records are incorrect as in uh, the exports for example uh, array has wrong strings it's not gonna fail but it's not gonna explode it's probably gonna throw an error right uh, well, it, it, tell me about what kind of um, uh, what kind of. Well, from what I understand, uh, the, the flow would be that uh, we we bundle the snap on the uh, client's computer, the user developer's computer, uh, which includes uh, pre-compiled static module records, and then we we run that on, on the extension side uh, and. Uh, we run that in a compartment and then the what if the developer is malicious and modifies uh the pre-compiled static uh, module records to provide to have data that is not uh actually inside the source of yeah of, yeah of, and, uh, and they the certainly static. can do that they could contrive uh they can contrive a static module record that is malicious um the the limits of what they can do with a modified uh, so what they can do is lie about what their live exports what their live vars once vars um and uh and such and provide provide erroneous data for what their api what what their exports api is that would induce the compartment to give them an incorrect bag of updaters which they could do anything they want with um that the, the, they could that they could uh, a re, a contrive a a functor that can that receives those updaters um which is to say that they can claim to import and export different names than they actually imported or exported it turn and and then update those values um it's so how would that manifest as an attack? Um, it could only really manifest as an attack if they were linked against something that wasn't in their bundle, um, which at the moment isn't possible. Um, so basically, they could uh, claim to import. Some, basically, they can do what you can do what, what, what they could induce through manipulation of their static module record, they could also, they, there's nothing that they can do by manipulating their static module record that they couldn't already do by writing a different program in JavaScript. Good. That's, that's, that's the essential invariant is that yeah. um, uh, the, 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 the mal corrupted, I mean, sorry, the mal compiled module is just uh, in terms of uh, its potential for damage to the integrity of other modules uh, is equivalent to simply a, a malicious program in that position constrained by all the same constraints. Is that correct? I believe so. Okay, though I would good. invite, but though as always with these things, I invite all ye hackers to tell us how that invariant is broken. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. The language, the language we use for that is we claim 
the following security property. Please prove us wrong. Yeah. All right, that answers all of my questions and I know to, how to proceed. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Um, yeah, and, and of course, uh, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, I, I'm sure that Aaron or whomever you are most in contact with can hook you up with all of our communication channels. Uh, we have one on Matrix uh, and we also, uh, and Agoric and MetaMask have a communication channel as well that we'd be happy to have you in. Okay, uh, let's let's call that a wrap for that topic. Uh, we're at 26 minutes. Um, we can go on to the review. It doesn't look like our friends at Salesforce are going to join us, so let's just get on with that. Um, let me uh, bring up the review. Does everybody see pull request narrow focus of proposal to module loading? Hi. Okay. Uh, so this is a rewrite essentially of the readme for the compartment proposal. Um, and the focus of this is based off of, this hasn't been updated in a year. So um, a, a great deal has changed about how we intend to present the compartment's proposal to TC39, what our aims are for this initial version of compartment and how it relates to the broader CES proposals, specifically lockdown. Um, the original, the, the previous version of this um, emphasized, um, and emphasized that we were asking for um, host virtualization hooks in a very general way at a, a, a finer grain than the realm. Um, and in practice, from what I've seen working with the compartment API and what XS and, and what Agoric have needed from it, um, those are uh, that most of the virtualization hooks, uh, pardon, that the only virtualization hooks we need in order for the compartment to be uh, useful in conjunction with lockdown are the module loader API. Um, and also coincidentally, and, and also having uh, creating uh, narrowing the focus of the compartments and in API initially to just the host virtualization hooks for module loading um, gives us an opportunity to recruit more allies for its advancement. Um, so uh, so so one of the a large part of what I've done with this is in the section on motivation, calling out specifically who we wish to be our allies in advancing this proposal which is to say people who are building bundlers, people who are building tooling around testing and things like that that need a module loader API. And um, I have dropped from the proposal host virtualization hooks. I, I, I do not even mention host virtualization hooks for things like time zone and stuff like that that we know would meet resistance from potential allies um, with the hope that uh, that we would have a follow-up proposal for specific ones on an as on a on a case by case basis, so that we can meet those conversations head on. Um, I, I specifically recall that we previously ran into resistance because the time zone uh, C libraries uh, that browsers use um, have global state for what time zone you're in, which makes it difficult to create a host. Uh, host to do host virtualization of the time zone and internet uh, and and some time related APIs. Um, and since we don't actually need that, since we um, uh, omit that feature from the shared intrinsics of, of the compartment after lockdown, I think that uh, that's a fight that we can put off. Yeah, um, so let, me, let me ask some questions. Yeah. So with regard to putting uh, postponing the fights rather than painting ourselves into a corner, um, because the host hooks would be new options with new names in an options bag. Uh, a later proposal uh, uh, adding a host hook would be uh, compat you know, compatible uh, as a follow-on proposal. It wouldn't break anything built to the earlier proposal. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. Okay. The other, the other question I have is, 
Um, so you say this is sort of specialized for module loading and you're omitting virtualization. That all I understand and makes sense. Um, what about, but the other main feature of compartments is uh, compartment.evaluate and the per compartment global. And I wasn't clear on uh, whether that is still included in this. That is not included in this, the, um, which is an interesting problem that we need to work through, I think, because motivating this in terms of a module lo loader API um, does, um, does it, it does have a slightly different shape um, in, order to, uh, in order to present the narrowest profile to the committee. Um, is specifically that I could not motivate the existence of evaluate if it is just a module loader API. And also if it's just a module loader API, um, it will be necessary to have a pre-lockdown semantics for compartment. Um, and those, and in the, the, the most sensible pre-lockdown se uh, semantics for compartment would be to share the global this uh, of of the uh, of the surrounding realm, um, since I do not think that we could achieve consent. Uh, pardon, I don't think we would be able to get all of our goals if the pre-lockdown compartment um, also entrained a uh, uh, at the the shape of the shared intrinsics. Um, Is there a reason we couldn't? Um have a uh, a new global this like we could but then we would have to explicitly state what properties of that global this would be inherited from the surrounding realm so 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 there are a couple of options for that particular problem one of which is to pivot uh the endowments argument um into just being a give me the global this option, in which case it wouldn't inherit the parents global this. And that would allow us to do what we want and also allow other folks to do what they need from their module loader. So my concern with, we, so in general, we've been very careful to design the, uh, the non-locked down language uh, and the lockdown language so that most code, the vast majority of code written to the non-lockdown language uh, that stay within best practices uh, uh, ha happens to be uh, runnable compatibly in the lockdown language. So we yes. try to keep, um, uh, and if the semantics of compartment is changed too much by lockdown, then compartment itself becomes an abstraction that violates that rule such that code that's written to the semantics of the non-locked down compartment stops porting easily to the compartment abstraction in the lockdown language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, sh I share that concern. Um, I have a I have a reply, but Bradley has a hand. I'm very curious what Bradley's thinking. So at least I know Dino is uh, making a lot of claims right now and are pinning a lot of hopes on compartments and realms, providing a mechanism for them to sandbox some of their global APIs. If there is no global this virtualization, uh, you might want to talk to them. Yeah. I, um, I, so, so let me, Bradley, let me just make uh, clear, clear. I understand. Is anybody from Dino on the call? No. Uh, okay. They are. They are very private people. Okay. Uh, so we, we've uh, met so, some of them. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so, so let so let me ask a question, and so that people people who know about Dino, like Bradley, can answer as be best as they can. Um, uh, are they looking for compartments with separate globals with, uh, in the absence of lockdown? So are, are they not interested in freezing the primordials? Correct. They are not 
seeking to freeze primordials they even have a recent blog post about claiming containerization of mutable javascript sandboxes okay so they but they are they do want to use compartments with separate globals where the different compartments share the same primordials is that correct uh i am unclear there okay because i mean what they're doing i mean so so i don't think it is feasible um if they're not they sharing share the primordials if they're not sharing if they're not i mean if they're share, if they're sharing the primordials and the primordials are not locked down then obviously they're not protected from each other's misbehavior and if they're not sharing the primordials if they have their own separate primordials then it's not a compartment api it's a realms api yeah i don't disagree on any of these points i i also very much feel but uh, pardon to clarify bradley my intention is for the compartment api to provide global virtualization after lockdown they and i think that the dino folks need a post lockdown compartment not a pre lockdown compartment i'm suggesting that there are other potential allies for example uh people writing things like browserify or webpack or parcel that the those kinds of pro programs that will that will wa will want the ability to at least pass the global this from the surrounding compartment in yeah but i think there's still benefits to uh, being able to provide and mint a new uh, global um for example maybe for test runners uh, yes oh i absolutely agree I and, absolutely agree that we need that. And I think that the pre-lockdown needs, I think that we need a solution for pre-lockdown that does that. The and, and, and it would technically give us a uh, way, I think, to do away with or with a uh, hack. Uh, because if you had a primitive that allows you to create a new global, you can't escape anymore uh, from it. Um, so, the so, so the question is, um, this isn't a question of removing the global emulation entirely. And if we have the global emulation, it's obviously a great idea to also put eval back. And I'm open, and I'd like to do that. Um, the just to clarify, you mean put evaluate back? Yes, to put evaluate back on the compartment API in this PR. Um, but in order to get there, I think that we need to also solve the problem of uh, folks wanting to pass the the unmodified global this into the compartment in order to preserve compatibility with existing code. Okay, so so um, if if there were such a way to do that, uh, it it would be consistent with the goals of hardened JavaScript, such that after lockdown, being able to create a compartment explicitly passing your own global this to the new compartment. Um, you know, if, if we provide a way in the API to do that, it would be consistent with hardened JavaScript to continue to support that API. Yeah, um, and and even in uh, even the there, there's an even um, an, another compelling argument for providing that is, for example, an options bag entry called global this. Like here is the global that you must use instead of having an endowments object that gets copied. Um, so so the one qualifier there that we've gotten, we've gotten feedback from uh, engine manufacturers uh, in the past that they don't want you to be able to specify an arbitrary object to serve as the global this for a new compartment. Okay. That, that it has to be a uh, object that was created to serve as a global this. Okay, so we do have to go back to endowment. Uh, Bradley, is your hand still up? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so there's a few things commenting on uh, about the most recent thing where it's a specialized object. Um, all engines do support essentially proxy traps, I think, except XS. So you can provide proxy traps to the globals, which might be sufficient that you don't actually need to provide an actual value. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. The other thing is one use case that Node was looking at, it's somewhat been abandoned now, is censorship of two 
historic, unfortunate globals that are on global this, which are uh, process and buffer. And we have tried various ways, including nasty call site checks and nothing is sufficient to really mock them out and really lock you away from them besides creating a new global. Okay. Um, this gets more complicated though, because people sometimes declare global variables. And so the global contour, whatever you want to call it, the global lexical scope does sometimes have weird shadowing effects. Uh, so, so let, let me just make sure. I, um, um, so when they declare a local variable, if they're declaring, uh, if, if it's a const or let or class, that goes in the contour. If it's a var or function, that still goes in the global this. Uh, not the case because we're always in a function body in common JS. People oh. are doing weird things. Oh, in common JS. Oh, 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 oh. I have yeah. no idea. Um, so they are like manually causing global evals and things and then shadowing stuff. Oh my God. Could you give us a pointer to an example of that? That's just uh, really No, this was found a few years ago when we tried to patch it and then like bad things, bad performance, workarounds were found and all this. Like you, you really do need an actual. So somebody is doing a direct eval uh, and defining something on the global disk that way? Uh, they weren't defining it, it on the global disk. They were using, I think it was let. But I mean, if they just say let inside the body of the common JS, it's just a local let. So how are they making the let global? Oh, I get this. I get it's, it's not a global. They're adding it to the global contour, which you can't do from within common JS because of the function wrapper. Yes. So they're forcing it into the global contour by, by calling, you know, indirectly. I don't down. remember why they did this, but it I'm, was sorry, just, they're, they're, I'm, I'm no. sorry. They're forcing it into the global contour by doing what? With, with they, a indirect eval, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so they would do open paren zero comma eval, close paren, open paren, let process equals blah, 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 blah. Okay, uh, it's okay if we don't support that. I'm, I'm fine I'm with saying... that. I'm just explaining that this does exist. Okay, um, yeah, I mean, it's in, in general, I, I, you know, we should be careful that our goal is not to be compatible with all the random shit people do right now. No, but for censorship purposes, you needed a different contour, which this was for censorship purpose. Ah, right. Got it. Okay, good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when, when this compartment proposal uh, starts getting written as speckies, we're definitely going to, if it includes evaluate, um, we will probably be compelled to do interesting things, uh, to, to specify interesting things we can't shim with regard to the global contour to, for cases like this and REPLs and such. Mm -hmm. um, I should add that to the list of motivations because uh, creating a REPL is one of the things that this will oh, be help with. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hey. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, so, so, so let, me, let me make sure I'm getting the gist of this conversation. We are considering, uh, so the, the, the PR that we're looking at uh, gets rid of per compartment globals and evaluate, but in this conversation, we are considering uh, reversing that and having the, uh, this PR include uh, the option of per compartment globals and evaluate or to put it another way, include per compartment globals with the option of sharing a global from another compartment explicitly. Yeah, um, that's, yes, that, I think that would be ideal. Matthew, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I was just trying to make sure I understand um, exactly the, the motivation, because if you share a global with uh, another compartment, you you have to share uh, the evaluators as well. 
So let me let me take a step back. The motivation, I think, would be to oh, sharing the evaluators. Uh, yes, and I think that that would be deliberate. Um, and in fact, not sharing the yeah, you, you can't not share the evaluators uh, if you share the global. It's 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 a package deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is to say. Yeah, so we need uh, we need to invent a way to specify this that satisfies the constraint that Mark mentioned earlier that I did not know about, which was which is I believe the motivation for the endowments argument for compartment, and that is that if a compartment has a unique global this, and consequently unique evaluators, um, the uh, that browsers would resist allowing the user to provide an arbitrary object for global this, um, which is to say that we need a way to multiplex the compartment API so that it has a mode where it's sharing the globals and evaluators of the surrounding compartment and a mode for passing in effectively the equivalent of what we have specified as endowments. Um, because my understanding is that if uh, there, there's a middle ground that I, I hadn't really thought thoroughly enough about, and that was that, hey, you could get most of what I thought that the, the broad non-lockdown module loader community would want by, um, uh, so I propose a straw man that you pass in a global this, that doesn't work because of the, the browser, uh, the browser limitation on globals. So alternately, the mode would be just share the global list of the parent compartment and consequently its evaluators, um, in which case the endowments trick doesn't work because if you were to pass global this, your own global this in as the endowments object for a compartment as, as currently implemented, you would get all of the properties of the globals from the outer compartment, including its evaluators. You but can't pass endowments if, if you pass an existing global list. I'm sorry? You can't provide endowments if you give an existing global list. It's either or. Right, but if, but if, you, uh, if the API supports an endowments argument, that is to say properties that should be copied to the compartment's own global list, one of the valid ways to use that, or pardon, maybe not valid, one of the ways that it will inevitably be used is passing the global this, your own global this in as the endowments object for a compartment. But what, right. that should mean, what that should mean is what it means right now, which is create a new global this and copy all the properties. That should not be, uh, a, you know, that should not be reinterpreted as share the global this because- I agree. Okay. I absolutely agree. Um, okay. Is it, so provided, so assuming based off of our agreement that the behavior is that, it, uh, that the properties of the parent global this are copied to the child global this, you would be in a strange hybrid situation where eval uh, would be implicitly indirect oh. in that compartment. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. That's interesting. Yeah, the, the evaluators would be, would come, you know, if you provide evaluators in an endowment, which in this case you would be effectively doing, then those evaluators would replace the um, uh, the new global's own evaluators. So you'd be in a situation where you have the new global this with copied properties, uh, but among those properties are the evaluators which evaluate in the context of the old global this. Right, so which I think would be unsatisfying to the people who want to use compartment but don't want to use yeah. uh, independent globals. So we do have an options bag on the end of the constructor arguments. Mm -hmm. um, we can say somehow with an options in the options bag, uh, use, use the parents global this. I, don't, I mean, I'm not proposing a way to say that. Yeah, let's invent a way to say that. I think that I should include that in this change. Okay. Speaking of which, um, uh, where are we with regard to um, uh, uh, 
your, you had a proposal to make the, uh, the constructor just take an options bag. In other words, just use name, optional name-based arguments. Yes. Rather yeah. than have two positionals. And the, the, we had, uh, and the issue uh, came down to uh, achieving agreement uh, with uh, Modable. Uh, yes. where, where, where was that left? Where are we with that? We haven't achieved agreement with Modable. Okay. <laughs> but despite that, I did uh, push that change into this PR, hoping that Patrick would notice and complain. Okay. Make sure to bring it to Patrick's attention so it doesn't seem like we're... Yeah, that we're sub yeah, submarining a change in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, if we if we did that, then omitting endowments and including the directive that says inherit the uh, parents global this would be that much more natural. It's, it's right. Yeah. So if we had a if we had a um, global globals option, that would be effectively um, a a good way to opt in to a unique global object uh, without having to express that with two separate um, with two separate options. Right. So you, you could have a uh, globals object and a global this object. And if you, oh, so you're saying only use the current uh, global this. You, you don't want to be able to specify any global this. Uh, that so so what, I, what I'm proposing that the spelling be for that, that bit that suggests whether to use uh, the parent global this or create your own, it would be the expression of an endowments object on the options bag. Right. What, what I was asking is that we don't want to provide the ability to uh, say, use that other global uh, this. Yeah. Well, like I, I think that Mark, Mark uh, conveyed prior feedback that browsers did not like the idea of being able to, uh, of being passed an arbitrary JavaScript value as the global object. Which is very sensible. Um, I, I and okay. I'm, yeah. So, so, yeah. so I don't understand what multiplexing you have in mind, such that one named option can express either uh, inherit the global from the parent, or here are endowments. So the there's the API design foot gun that I would like to avoid is that is one where there are two options on the compartment options bag, one of which indicates which mode it's in, and the other is an option that is only valid in one of those two modes. Uh, so, I, okay, I understand that stated desire. I don't understand how to achieve it. Yeah, so if we, if we did, uh, so what I'm proposing as a straw man is that uh, in the absence of a globals option having been provided, uh, the compartment would be constructed in a mode where it inherits the parent global. Oh, I, I hate that. Uh, it's got to, the, 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 the easy way has to be the safe way. Uh, the defaults need to, need to default safe. Yeah. I'll, I'll record that. <laughs> Which is to say that in order to serve that, my, my design foot gun would have to, would have to, uh, suffer yeah um, it is a dichotomy we can't have both i mean you can just throw if you find incompatible options yes that is what we would have to do okay i'm fine with that not great but yeah wow well. it's not bad uh it's it's not fatal <laughs> Uh, I mean, sorry, so I don't even get the aesthetic. What's bad about throwing on incompatible options? That just seems like normal programming. To me. Yeah, that's fair. And there are other places in the compartment API where we have to do that. Um, uh, for example, if a compartment is constructed without uh, the necessary module, um, it is possible, uh, as, as, as shimmed, it is possible to construct a compartment that does not have module hooks and is just used as an evaluator. 
Um, what happens if there is no options provided? So we would want to create a new global, I suppose, for the safe uh, yep. yes. default. Uh, that yes. does mean we need that to be the case in the, uh, right away in this API, even if some, so if, if we end up getting rid of um, being able to create new globals for uh, for this API with before lockdown, uh, lockdown would have to make change the default behavior basically. Yeah, I don't want I don't want lockdown to to to. I want to keep the non lockdown semantics as close to the lockdown semantics as possible. I think both of them should default towards safe, but obviously it's it's under lockdown where. Uh, safe actually means something. Uh, under lockdown, just new compartment with no arguments um, uh, should create a new global with new evaluators. Um, uh, and therefore, I think that the non-lockdown compartment with no, with no arguments should create a new global with new evaluators. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I defer. I, uh, yeah. So uh, going over the text, let's it, see what the- Actually, one, one thing, uh, if we have new evaluators, uh, that does mean what in, 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 in real spec, not in shim uh, world, uh, function would have to be different inside uh, new compartment. So now we have the function constructor uh, fun stuff. Um, oh, that, that's just the, you know, um, the, you know the, the, the analog of what we do with lockdown compartments. It's just that each global, every time you create a, a new global under normal conditions, uh, you give it its own global evaluators. And, and the language right now has exactly, well, language with compartments proposal would have exactly, oh, four global evaluators, I suppose. Uh, eval, function, compartment, and I'm, realm? I'm, I'm confused about realm. I'm, I'm, I think my question was, what happens to uh, function prototype dot constructor uh, in the non-lockdown environment? Ah, 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 very good question. Wow, that's a very good question. Yeah. So if the if the compartment inherits the globals, global this and evaluators, that's a that's coherent. What's if coherent? It is it is coherent for the compartment to inherit. Uh, it, pardon. It would be coherent in the case where a compartment is expressly constructed inheriting the globals and evaluators of the parent compartment. Um, for there to for the compartment to not have its own evaluators, right? Right. Um, but if they have their own global disk, they need new evaluators, and those evaluators, the prototype chain uh, would be invalid unless, yeah. I, I think I think the so I'm going to pr propose a concession here, which I think is probably necessary in order for compartment to be additive to, uh, to the existing standard language, non-lockdown compartments. Um, uh, you know, non-lockdown non compartments should not, by adding them to the language, it shouldn't change any of the existing language. In the existing language, um, the uh, function constructors dot prototype dot constructor points back at that function constructor in the uh, within the um, way of thinking of the you know the, the, the terminology of the compartment proposal that function constructor is the function constructor of the start compartment. So I think what happens is that uh, all of the function constructors do share the same function prototype. Uh, as with the lockdown compartment, but that function prototype in the non-lockdown world, that function prototypes dot constructor has to be the function constructor 
from the start compartment and mm -hmm. then lock down, not by changing the definition of compartments, uh, but just by doing the repair of, by doing the repair of the intrinsics that we're already specifying that it does, replaces the shared functions prototype dot, com, dot constructor to point at an inert function constructor. So I think this is all a consistent story. So a non-lockdown uh, compartment can definitely still reach into uh, the start compartments global by using the prototype chain evaluators. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, yes. And I, I posit that that's what people will expect when using the compartment API just as a module loader. Yeah, and I think and I think this is a forced choice by having the addition of non-locked of the addition of compartments to the non-lockdown language must not change the existing standard non-lockdown language. You you'll have weird identity discontinuity in uh, instance of functions. No, no, you won't, because every the instance of only cares that everybody is sharing the same function prototype, which they would still do. If all function constructors point at the same function dot prototype and all functions inherit from it, then instance of works perfectly. Right. Oh yeah, true. Hmm. Um, well, in any case, I think we worked through some issues and I'll record them um, and we're at time. And just because it's my pet topic, I'm not going to <laughs> change the rules. <laughs> so please uh, go to your next meetings. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the feedback and, and perhaps to continue this next week.